It is a bit of a college football alphabet soup. OU, UT, SEC, but really it comes down to money. I think let's check in with Chip Brown, who is with Horns 247.com. He's a good friend of mine, Chip. I appreciate you making time because I know there's all kinds of stuff going on with the Longhorn program and where they're going to be playing, when they're going to be playing. Why UT and OU? Why did they decide to go to the SEC? Well, and you mentioned there's all kinds of stuff going on and the A&M Regents just came out of an executive session and said that they will vote yes or kathy banks will vote yes uh when the sec presidents um, meet tomorrow and are expected to vote on texas and oklahoma's admission into the southeastern conference and that vote is expected to go through um but why is this happening steve i think it's um there's a lot of change coming to college athletics and some of it's already happening with name image likeness earnings for student athletes and and i think with the new leadership at texas because 10 years ago 11 years ago when realignment occurred uh, texas would have never thought of going to the sec in part because uh, mac brown and delos dodds uh, were sort of in agreement that you know they weren't sure how recruiting uh, was being done, whether it was being done above board or below board. And and now there's a new leadership group at Texas, uh, UT President Jay Hartzell, Regents Chairman Kevin Eltife, and Athletic Director Chris Del Conte. And I think they feel like the name image likeness um, for student athletes being able to earn money uh, is it sort of negates any of the previous concerns. And when you look at the playoff, likely expanding to either eight or 12 teams, uh, the sense is go play with the best, bring your fans the best games. And they're counting on Steve Sarkeesian, the new coach, to elevate the program to be competitive uh, on par with the SEC, which has dominated the college football playoff, while the Big 12, Oklahoma, is been in the college football playoff, but has yet to win a game in the college football playoff. And Oklahoma has certainly been carrying the flag for the Big 12. Texas has been sort of out wandering around trying to figure things out the last 10 years after an incredible 10 years in the first decade of the 2000s. So, and let's talk about the program itself. I mean, you mentioned that the SEC is this powerhouse in football with Alabama, LSU. So for a move for UT and OU to be joining that group, joining the SEC, do you think that that is something that's going to pave the path to increase success for either of these programs? Well, it's, it's going to be high quality entertainment. I mean, you're going to get your season ticket holders to renew every year. You're not going to have to to go, you know, bring in a big name marquee non-conference opponent. In fact, Texas has Alabama on the schedule uh, for 22 and 23. They have Georgia on the schedule in 28, 29 and Florida on the schedule in 30 and 31. And part of that is just to enhance the home, you know, season ticket holder schedule because Texas fans don't get real excited about Kansas State, Kansas, um, Iowa State, Baylor, TCU. Now, that's not to say that those schools haven't been beating up on Texas because they have uh, for, you know, in and out of the last 10 years. So, you know, Texas, again, is betting on itself here, and it's not going to be easy. I mean, the Big 12 is going to, right now, is posturing – like they're going to make this really difficult today. The Big 12 sent a cease and desist letter to their primary TV partner, ESPN, telling ESPN to stop talking to Big 12, uh, stop talking to Big 12 schools, stop talking about Big 12 schools to other conferences when it comes to realignment. Interesting. Basically, accused ESPN of talking. Um, to another conference about trying to attract one of the remaining eight schools uh, to a conference. So this is going to get crazy. Realignment always does. The passion of college athletics always 
uh, it assists in that. All you have to do is go to Twitter to, yeah. to read <laughs> yeah. all the yeah. all the viewpoints on this. But it's um, Chip, we're running, know, out of time. we're running out of time here. I want to ask you one more question before I go, because I know you're well versed in the Big 12 and in the college football landscape. What does UT and OU leaving the Big 12 mean for schools like Baylor, like Texas Tech, like TCU? Yeah, I mean, we don't know yet, but it uh, to, to me, the Pac-12 and whether, you know, they've been trying to get into the central time zone. Do they make a move to try to acquire some or all of the remaining Big 12 schools is something to watch here. Do you think the legislature steps in on this? I mean, I think Texas and Oklahoma might have been hoping that the Big 12 would be dissolved by the time the legislature meets in regular session again in 2023. Um, The remaining schools in the Big 12 are saying we need to keep Texas and OU in the Big 12 for the next four years. That's not what Texas and OU are hoping. Yeah, a lot to watch in addition to the football itself. Chip Brown with uh, Horns247.com. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it, buddy. We'll be right back.